That'll work right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Mace of Great Days! Give me a hell yeah! Thank you so much, brother. First, I want to start off by saying we appreciate you being here, spending some time with us. God bless you for keeping Chester's flame burning bright as can be and uh, for giving us amends in the Phoenix. Both fantastic records. Uh, I guess first I'll start by saying... Was there, I've always wanted to know if there was ever any fight from Warner Brothers regarding any form of vocal from Chester. Well, uh, <clears throat> nothing at the beginning of this, no. Back in the day, they didn't want us to, uh, you know, it was already out on a small label, and uh, I think it was Orchard, and they kind of shut that down. So they did, yeah, at one point, does, shut yeah. something down. Oh, yeah. Sure. That is a bummer. Uh, I imagine the whole process was ex extremely, extremely emotional. Is there is there one particular song on either Amends or Phoenix that's almost just hard for you to listen to because it just gives you the chills? Let me correct. The shutting down was back in the day. Right. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, not now. Uh so to answer your question uh, with that, the first record, uh, Amends, was much more emotional, uh, 100%. And like Maurice Sky and Soul Song and just different things are, you know, super heavy to record. And everybody was super emotional on that first record. And, um, you know, time heals wounds a little bit. And uh, as we got into the writing process for the third record, because it's the second, you know, the just amends um which happened during the pandemic and everything uh it just got more of a kind of like you know let's just really uh celebrate the vocals we have here you know what i mean like you know, I, the first one is more of a tribute and like let's you know just finish what we started almost like a weird dream you know what i mean and then um reality sets in a couple of years later and stuff and there's still material and uh, we just kind of got to work and uh, less producers and more hands-on with us and uh, yeah that's the Phoenix, a bit heavier a little bit more guitar orientated I think you know less uh, and it, less it, overdubs and stuff, it's like less production as far as you know, instrumentation it is a, a total celebration, that album is is, is superb, uh how did you guys find Chris? And is there any other artist that you ever considered to do, for doing the shows that you have coming up? So right now we only have one show. Um, that is at uh, the U-Fest, although we're talking about other things. Um, well, he, he had been around for quite some time because I remember him uh, being involved in the original, uh, one of the memorial events out in Mesa out here and I think in the end played that um because you know documentaries you know just talking about uh Chester and stuff and um I, I believe Sean reached out to him but somehow it just kind of organically happened and that you know this is and this is what we've always talked about because we were never looking for you know, we're not replacing anybody. We're not facing Chester. We're just doing some shows, and uh, he's just a super professional, great, uh, uh, great guy. I mean, super classy. He has a great, uh, great talent. Um, he just, you know, he suits. He suits it. He suits it. He gets along great with us, and uh, it's an interesting thing to get to the live stage. Of cool. this for sure. I, I never. We really never thought it would ever actually come to fruition, to be honest with you. I never thought. Well, I hope he does fantastic, and I'm sure he will. Uh, Mace, my co-host today is is JB. JB, do you have a question or two for Mace? Yes, it's a pleasure meeting you, Mace. Thank you so much for being here. Um, my question is for you. What is your emotions coming into performing these live? <laughs> Roller coaster, man. 
but for numerous reasons. Um, on an actual, just say, uh, artist and band level, um, I'm not concerned, but uh, we're, you know, we're very uh, curious to see how we will be, um, you know, uh, what I'm looking for, accepted or so, you know, it's a whole kind of it's just a different vibe going on. For me personally, it's extremely challenging because I dropped my Harley uh, three years ago. And um, yeah, I, I broke a lot of bones. I'm half, I'm like a lot of metal. <laughs> um, so my, it took me a year just to get my back with my hand. I, don't, I didn't really talk about it much. Um, but I'm back. I can play well. And But I'm, I'm definitely not going to be jumping around like, uh, yeah. Uh, so me, personally, it's, it's physically challenging for me. Uh, for us as a band, we're super excited. It, it's interesting because on the one hand, there's a, there's a sense of freedom of talking to, you know, talking to Hot Rig. That's the nickname for uh, Christian about how there's, you know, the only pressure we have is to just play our best and, and, you know, hope all the fans really, really like what we're doing live. Uh, it's not like we're, we're musicians trying to conquer something or take out the headliner or, or, you know, get that big deal. It's, it's such a, everything about, uh, you know, what we've been doing for the past three, four years um, is just completely just different, out of the ordinary, not what I'm used to, not what any of us is used to, and, and including the, the live shows will be uh, the same way because uh, we've not, we didn't even rehearse when we recorded amends because we, we were rehearsing to go live. Uh, sessions started out, out of state as far as recording, you know, started to re-record records and, and doing things back then. And we had set up our initial rehearsal. We rehearsed for a weekend, took a break, and, and Chester was supposed to meet with us the following weekend. And that's when the, uh, you know, things went, you know, in the, the bad direction. Um, and up from then on, it was all just writing. We never physically got in a room and then I dropped my Harley when we were finally going to try and start playing a little bit to work on the second record. Uh, yeah. Um, crazy. So it's just a, it's a very unique situation and uh, we're super excited to play. We're getting tight and Chris sounds great. Um, but, it, you know, it's uh, we're looking forward to it for sure. Excellent. We are too. Uh, regarding regarding B12, in that particular situation when you guys were tracking, did you reach out to to Corn or did they contact you and say we just have to be involved in this project? That was organically occurred because uh, Sean is friends uh, with Head, and he just was like literally just playing uh, mixes for Head to just see what he thought. He was just like you know playing it for a buddy like hey, what do you think of what we're doing you know and head heard that and he wanted to get be a part of it and then he was like yeah of course you know and then he asked monkey to come in like of course you guys are a team um and they came in uh with b12 uh you know they put their twist on b12 and it was amazing is that is that the same similar situation that how robert got involved from filter as well you just Sean was just showing him tracks, and he's like, "I I totally have ideas for this." Or is it, was that come about a little bit differently? We needed someone. We uh, there was no chorus for that song, and uh, I think Sean and came up with it with uh, SK the producer. I'm not sure exactly. Um, and we needed someone to sing that part, and uh, Brian. The sound engineer at Sunset had worked with uh, Richard, and um, sorry, I said Robert. My bad, Richard. Yeah. Uh, uh, somehow we he came down, or we sent it to him that week because it was staggered. When we tracked, we were there for two weeks, and we were staggered. 
So during that first two weeks, somehow we got it to uh, to Richard, and he came down, and it was just magical. Like it was. Uh, that's one of the coolest. That and having Lily and Lila on the record, uh, you know, is all is really, really, really cool and heartwarming. And the duet with uh, Richard to me is just um, kind of a one of a one of a kind thing to me. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Do you guys how well they blend? I imagine there's still some more music that we haven't heard. Is there? plans to ever do a third album or maybe a, a, another EP or anything or he we're, we're def, uh, we would like to do another script version now of the rest you know of the other songs we haven't done that too hell yeah look forward to that that's awesome and really really like the script record um, when it comes on uh, we have a great day, great days at the Pandora station and I'll occasionally flip that on uh, my car and uh that that song pops on or the strip version of those songs i really like that, that stuff so, some of my favorite stuff to listen to so it really 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 stripped down in there you know very cool i have one more then i'm gonna let jb ask a couple uh mace do you have a particular favorite moment with chester that every time you think of it you just burst into laughter this is the the most fun joyful memory you have of him i'm gonna keep it to myself but i'll just say it was uh new year's eve it was a night uh i think we had played we had played with i don't know who it was the uh, death tones or something around this area we did a show and then i went off and sat in with uh half the cats from uh, uh lynch mob and stuff and um it turned into it was a big, really big wild party night and all i know is that uh, at the end of the night chester and i we were both carried out of this particular place we we're at and um that was a good night yeah. you guys were both carried out <laughs> you said yeah we were carried out um <laughs> I'm sober now for over 12 years. So I mean, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Good for you. JB, uh, what's <laughs> another question that you have for Mace? Mace, uh, another question I have. Uh, you knowing so many big you know, stars and you being one of them, uh, do you still have any kind of like – I guess people call it like a fangirl moment over any, you know, music artist that you may encounter in your life or get ex extremely excited, you know, um, when it comes to uh, music, maybe a movie star. It's uh, whatever your choice. Uh, there's one particular band that I really, really would like to see and I'd love to meet the singer. And that's a band called uh, Nothing But Thieves. I really like that band. I can't wait for them to get into uh in the states, I'd like to meet those cats. But oh. uh, yeah, I'm not any kind of. I'm just a musician. I'm just a cat in a band. You know, Chester was a you know is a star. Uh, I'm just a musician that kind of. You know, I'm a bass player. I'm, yeah. So you're a very important you. part part of the band. No, I, I I'm, yeah. I'm 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 a fan of the the people in the back. That's who, who makes it happen. You know what I mean? People behind the scenes. I hear you. <laughs> Uh, I just don't like to, uh, yeah, I'm like, you know, star. I'm, you know, I'm just a guy at my, in my bedroom interviewing right now. Yeah. Mace, do you have in any, any goofy, goofy hobbies or, or something uh, that we would just, let's, I just want to know a little bit more about you. Something that you do in your spare time that you like your main pastime aside from music. Do I have any goofy hobbies? Do you collect anything maybe? Like collecting thing, Derringer, guns? No. I'm a cat fanatic. I mean, I love animals. I love my cat. My cat runs in the house. Um, I'm into Corvettes. I'm into muscle cars since I dropped the hog. I'm into convertibles and muscle cars and vets. Yeah. So let's say, let's say hypothetically, you just hit the lottery. You took it all at once. It's still a huge chunk. You got millions and millions and millions. What car are you buying that you're going to work on? Oh, I would just buy a new uh, convertible C8 just to have it. 
Those things are fly. With the wing on the back? Because they have the wings on the back now, right? On the on the C8 Corvettes? On there, because over 100, you want that. Yeah. It's, it's a sleek car, though. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, Mace, is there, is there, th this is a local band show, so I would like to know if there's any advice that you'd have for, for fellow musicians that may be watching and they're, they're in a garage band that want to get to the next stage. Is there a particular piece of advice that you could share that uh, was always important to you regarding music? Yeah, I got two. I got two uh, words of wisdom, so to speak. When you're choosing a band member, uh, go human first, they can always get better. That's one. And two, yeah, you know, don't choose the asshole that has the chops. And two, um, the band that stays together gets the carrot, you know, and the band that works the hardest. You can out rehearse another band. You can out you can out out you know, stay together, outlive and out rehearse other bands. You always it's it's kind of bizarre if you can get worse. How can you not get better if you practice? And if you out practice everybody, man. I like that. Uh Chai wants me to ask about the Chester Memorial Wall in Phoenix. It's not really a question attached. They just want you to to, to discuss it, I I believe. What are you uh you... yeah that happened uh that was painted over through the the memorial uh through the pandemic time and stuff. So I, a lot of us were looking around for it. There's a couple places like that in Arizona being its hometown. Um but yeah, we were trying to do something uh, connected with the record for that to kind of put a little bit more emphasis on him and, you know, the fact that he's from here. Um, but it just didn't fall together. I remember that. But I got nothing special to say about the mural other than it, it should be there. <laughs> it's, it's badass from it what I've heard. There. <laughs> it should be there. Uh, JB, I think we have time to do maybe two more questions. What would be your final question for Mace? My final question is, say if you were to, for whatever reason, have to stop doing music and you have to find find a, like a new hobby, like painting or, or something like that, what, what would you pick? Uh, I do paint and I'd probably, uh, I'd get in the film, film like paranormal, awesome. like, you know make some kind of crazy horror flick about Bigfoot. Hell yeah. <laughs> Which are, are you, you're a huge horror buff, correct? No, I meant to, uh, so I, I, I do have a show on the side called Aliens and Beyond with my co-host Heidi Gatchy. Um, and we talked about conspiracies and aliens and all different things. So I'm kind of into um, documentaries and stuff like that. She's slowly getting into it. Uh, so eventually, if, you know, I might get into doing some of that type of thing. Um, yeah, I'm into I'm, I'm into co-hosting things like that. We 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 took a break from it for a couple of years now, um, but I think we might put that channel back together in next year or so. Mace, my last question for you, and again, we appreciate your time so much, sir. Uh, is there is there an artist or two that wanted to get involved in the men's or the Phoenix? that it just didn't work out timing-wise, schedule-wise, for some reason that we may not know about? It was uh, numerous. Um, it was a team. Uh, there were numerous things, but scheduling and all that, uh, it, it didn't happen. Um, I think it's just from epic. In essence, we're probably going to do some stuff. Yeah, you know, we did. We talked with a lot of people, and you know, it's also timing and just what song suited. We just didn't want. We just didn't do it to do it. It all had to make sense, and you know, like you can go on on YouTube and see Richard singing with Chester live. You know, they were buddies, and uh, same thing with Dave. Dave, you know, the reason Dave came down to drop that guitar track is because he never recorded. With Chester, and this is, uh, you know, on his part, his, his personal level, he got to, you know, drop a track with him. It was, you know, a lot of this stuff is more on a personal level, you know, than people think. You know, 
the reason why Ryan was on it, of course, he's from Dead Dead by Sunrise. We're super close, so we made sure he got on. Uh, you know, amends. They all had to make sense, and there was a lot of people, you know, that were on, and and, and then we had the pandemic, and you know, we tracked uh, uh, the Phoenix uh, through some of the pandemic. It was, you know, it was not easy to to navigate that kind of scenario, you know, right? In closed rooms, even when we did the amends uh, strip, it was really that was that was tough. that was very tough because of the pandemic. Well, both records are extremely special. I'm happy to say that I was part of the one of the uh, the small community that got to hear the Phoenix from top to bottom. And that special listening party that you guys had, I was involved in that. It was uh, it was an absolute pleasure. Mace, thank you so much. Have a blast at the festival with Chris and the rest of the boys. Thank you so much for your time, yeah. sir. And uh, stay safe. And uh, we just really appreciate, it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Sure. You guys have a great night. You too. May 6th. Mace of Great Days! Give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! Yeah!